Beginning in 2018, the WWE signed a lucrative 10-year strategic partnership with the Ministry of Sport in Saudi Arabia to host events of their kind in the country. Now, while some of these events have been met with a lot of mixed reviews, the WWE have recently backed themselves into a corner with the introduction of the Crown Jewel Championship, which has caused a lot of negative reaction on social media. But what's going on, guys? It is Catch back with another video on the channel. If you are new around here, I make weekly wrestling content. So if you get if you like what you're seeing, please give this a like and a subscribe as I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers as soon as possible. And let's get straight into it. In the days leading up to the Bad Blood pay-per-view, WWE's Chief Content Officer Paul Triple H Levesque teased a major announcement on the show. Now, a lot of people within the community thought this was the creation of a women's mid-card title, a title which is sorely needed given the extreme depth of female talent on the roster. However, when we got to the day of the Bad Blood pay-per-view, Triple H's announcement was actually the creation of a Crown Jewel Championship, which will only be exclusively defended on the on the Saudi shows, I should say. Now, I wouldn't have an issue with this if the if this Crown Jewel Championship was then carried around by the respective holder for the rest of the year. However, there's two major problems with it. Number one it is champion versus champion. So currently it'll be Cody Rhodes versus Gunther and Nia Jax versus Liv Morgan for the women, which is going to mean that one of these champions is going to look extremely weak coming out of the event, both on the men's and women's side. And the second thing is, is that after the Crown Jewel event, which is coming up, WWE are not going to make any reference to this championship at all. It won't be carried around by whoever wins it, and there will not be a single notion of it on any other shows moving forward. So it means to be said, what was the point of this Crown Jewel Championship? Is it just a way of appeasing the Saudi officials? I guess it's probably the right way to put it. But I don't know, it just sounds like the WWE were sort of backed into a corner with this upcoming event in Saudi Arabia and they had to do something to sort of fulfill their obligations to the Ministry of Sport. But I don't know, the Crown Jewel Championship is not going to be a, a well-received uh, championship and it hasn't been given the backlash it's received on social media. The issue WWE find themselves in is they have to do two of these Saudi shows per year. So obviously Crown Jewels coming up and they also did King and Queen of the Ring earlier in the year. They also have to fly all their staff, crew and talent out and have to pre-tape a show of either SmackDown or Raw depending on which day they fly out of course, which then hurts the overall live product as tape shows are a bit bit silly in the modern day age and they you know with the event of spoilers being online people generally know the results of matches before the show actually airs which is a bit annoying but that's the problem that WWE currently have with live shows in general not just the Saudi show it's generally a live show thing but even though the Saudi crowd are very very good as international crowds generally are a la backlash in France 2024 earlier in the year WWE also has another problem with the fact that they've been doing these events since 2018 and I can count out of the 11 they've done so far maybe three have been good obviously King and Queen of the Ring earlier in the year was a pretty good show as it sort of set up uh, storylines for SummerSlam and beyond Night of Champions 2023, which is where the Usos turn on Roman Reigns and the Bloodline, and of course Crown Jewel 2022, which was where Roman Reigns took on Logan Paul in the main event for the Undisputed WWE Universal Championship. Quite a stellar match, if you ask me. It's probably a, probably the best match uh, of Roman Reigns is uh, 2022 at that point. Unfortunately for the Saudi pay-per-view shows, there's also been quite a few bad matches that have taken place in these events. Obviously, the one that comes to mind is Goldberg versus The Fiend, where The Fiend was on a pretty good title run at that point in time, and all his momentum in The Fiend character was killed when he had was made to drop the title to a very past it Goldberg. Unfortunately, sticking with Goldberg, he's had another tragic match on one of these events in which he took on The Undertaker, got concussed within the first few minutes of the match, and was unable, well, he was able to compete the match. Unfortunately, uh, he almost dropped, he did drop the Undertaker on his head and almost left him paralyzed. Fortunately, Taker was definitely quite uh, a professional and was able to continue the match, but that match should have been stopped. They should have had the referee just stop it and go, no, you're not finishing your concussed, go get treatment. And the other match that's been quite poor on this Saudi Arabian pay-per-view was DX versus the Brothers of Destruction. Now they even managed to bring HBK out of retirement, the heartbreak hit Shawn Michaels. And that was just a tragic match. I think Triple H tore his quad early on into the match. Kane's mask fell off. And yeah, they, they, all the competitors in that match were well past it by that point. It was probably a match that should have taken place maybe 20 years prior. And unfortunately, the end result that the Saudi crowd got was not something that any of the competitors or WWE should have been proud of. The other match that seems to be 
quite uh, talked about on the Saudi shows is the greatest Royal Rumble from the first 2018 event. Now, harping back to my earlier point, the greatest Royal Rumble was a 50-man event specifically for the Saudi show in 2018. Uh, since it was the inaugural uh, Saudi show. Now, unfortunately, the winner of this event was given a green WWE title belt for winning the event, Braun Strowman, who won it. But unfortunately, after that match, the green title belt was never seen. It was a hideous, hideous title belt. And uh, rightfully so, should have never been seen again. But for some reason, every time the Saudis have a pay-per-view, it seems to have at least one bad match in it, which sort of tarnishes the overall show in Saudi Arabia. And this is why WWE constantly have a problem with trying to best it, give the best direction for these shows. As I mentioned earlier, the WWE have sort of backed themselves into a corner with this 10-year strategic partnership, of which there's still four years left to run on this deal. I'm not necessarily sure they will extend it past 2028 when the current deal expires, but the Saudi officials always like a certain level of expectation in these two events they have per year. That's why you see weird title changes like Goldberg beating The Fiend, or random one-off matches where HBK was told to come out of retirement uh, just for the Saudi shows because it's a spectacle for the Saudi crowd and while the Saudi crowd are great and they have a real you know real working relationship with getting a lot of the talent over as do a lot of the international crowds that we've seen so far this year I feel like it is hurting like upcoming pay-per-views in particular Survivor Series because WWE have sort of had to pivot uh, from what would have been the original plan going straight from Bad Blood into Survivor Series by having the creation of a crown jewel championship which will only be for the Saudi shows, it sort of just has created an artificial storyline, which I don't think is necessarily going to work long term because the, the championship itself, whilst it looks well ridiculous, to be perfectly honest, it does have a lot of diamonds and gold in it. It's not going to be carried past this show. It won't be mentioned on WWE television, no matter how much Joe Testatore and Wade Barrett on Raw try to you know pump it up and market it. It just doesn't necessarily going to work. It's just I don't think the Crown Jewel Championship should have been created. Maybe they should have had a tournament for a trophy or something like they've done in the past. Might have been a better way to do it. But I just don't think the Crown Jewel Championship is going to be something that will go down in the annals of WWE history as something that has been something that has worked. But, you know, given the history of the Saudi shows, I'm hoping that this one is going to be a lot better than previous ones because they're sort of in my book three out of 11, which is not great. That's a pretty poor percentage rate. So hopefully with this one, they'll definitely improve. And obviously over the last few years, they, I think the Saudi shows have improved from the initial ones, but it just remains to be seen if they can improve them long term. Uh, but anyway, guys, that has been the end of this video. I hope you have enjoyed let me know what you think of the saudi arabian shows going forward and if you think wwe currently has a problem with how they've been backed into a corner with these shows um but yeah leave it a like give it a subscribe and yeah i'll see you with another video very soon have a good one guys see ya bye